So now I hope you know everything about conduction, convection and radiation. So let's put it all together with the thermos flask. Um, in exams, again, they're going to call this a vacuum flask because thermos is a sort of um, protected trademark. It's the name of one company that makes them. Now, this is a really clever device. And for exams, you need to know what design features it's got to make sure that it stops heat transferring through it. Did you hear me say that? Through it. So what I mean is it stops heat getting in if you put something cold in it and it stops heat getting out if you put something warm in it. So let's take it apart and look at the features of this that reduce heat transfer as much as you can. So let's now explain the features of the thermos flask that make it brilliant at stopping heat getting in or heat getting out if you put a warm uh, liquid um, inside it. Okay, so firstly it's made of plastic and plastic is a really, really bad conductor of heat. It doesn't have free electrons in it. So heat isn't going to transfer through the plastic. Um, secondly, um, it's got a lid. And that lid is also made of plastic and a big rubber plug. So if you think about it, if we put a hot liquid inside, the heat from the liquid can't conduct through um, the lid. There's also an air space in the lid and air is a really bad conductor. The other thing that's worth noting is that the entrance to the thermos flask is really small and we're going to lose heat anyway via convection, especially if it's upright. Um, it has to be obviously if there's a liquid in here. And so let's stop convection by making the entrance to the top as small as possible and let's block it off so we can't get any convection from the thermos flask. Finally, how do we stop radiation? Well, this is really clever. Old thermos flasks, you could actually take apart. Got to be careful not to drop this. And there is that shiny bottle I've discussed with you before. So, firstly, it's made of glass. Okay, so it's easily dropped and broken, which is why it used to be replaceable. Glass is a bad conductor of heat. Okay, but unfortunately, glass is see-through normally, so you get heat radiation going through it. But look what they've done. They've made the container really, really shiny. So any infrared waves that try to get in, reflect off and keep the contents cold. And it's shiny on the inside as well. And so any hot liquid in here that gives radiation outwards, that radiated infrared heat will reflect back in and keep the liquid warm. So have a little think about the thermos flask. And uh, one thing that's really good to do is to draw your own version of the thermos flask and label all the features that it has. For example, a glass wall, bad conductor of heat. A shiny wall reflects infrared heat, radiated heat. But there's one thing kept a little bit secret about, and I can't show it to you without smashing this, and I'm not going to do that, okay? This is actually not a single beaker that's shiny. It's actually two. And so there's a container in here inside another container and then a third one to protect the glass. So we've got two glass walls, two glass walls. Doesn't it sound like double glazing? OK, and yes, this is double glazed. But even better than that, it's double glazed. And between the two glass layers is a vacuum. And if there's a vacuum, you'll never get any heat transferring through it via conduction. Uh, there's no particles to um, vibrate and you won't get any convection. So the vacuum stops conduction and convection and the shiny surface stops the transfer of heat via radiation. So you might not use a thermos flask very much but um, have a look around you at all the things um, in your house that are designed to stop heat transferring. Have a look at the double glazing and things like that. And the radiators, well, this one's made out of metal, so that's a good conductor of heat. Now, um, whilst making this video, as you know, um, most of the UK is sort of um, closed, as it were, um, so you can't go out for a takeaway coffee very easily. Um, but um, I bought this a long time ago, and um, I'm sort of uh, such a physics geek, I look upon containers like this as interesting physics things. Um, so here's your coffee um, 
what do you call it, sort of uh, disposable container from Costa, and have a look inside. It's white, so any of the radiated heat will be reflected back in and keep the drink warm. It's got a lid on it, which stops the loss of heat via convection, and just a tiny hole there um, to allow you to drink. It's got this ribbed surface, which apart from allowing you to hold it and it doesn't slip in your hands, it puts an air layer between your hand and the mug. And an air layer is a really bad conductor of heat. And finally, the really secret bit, underneath, it doesn't touch the uh, desk. It, there's a sort of um, raised bit inside here. So you haven't got any contact with the surface, so it's much harder for heat to get from this surface and conduct through to the desk that you put the drink on. So um, these are designed to be really good at keeping the liquid warm inside. So have a look at some of those things and um, you'll become a bit more expert at understanding heat transfer. Great, so I hope you're a bit better now at understanding how heat transfers. Do have a look at the videos again and check that you fully understand conduction, convection and radiation and maybe learn the thermos flask and its features. Anyway, I'll be making another video lesson soon and I look forward to seeing you then.